The fact that the community was able to come together and get this legislation passed and, and stall um, what was a corporate process is, in my mind, not totally unprecedented, but at least very rare. Um, it's really rare for the state to step in and say, hey, wait a second, I think we do have an interest here. Um, how are we going to assure that the population that lives in these smaller communities that are an asset. Um, there's farming here, there's watermen here, there's an economy here that supports the rest of the state. A lot of tourism comes through here. And so, yeah, we're, we're small and we are still essential. And so the state has an interest in making sure that we're taken care of. And I think that that is um, the most exciting thing about this particular opportunity. Um, I will say that uh, Chairman Middleton also comes from a rural area, so his heart is really uh, with us in that, and I think that that's been clear over the last year or so that he's been involved. And I know Chairman Hammond from um, my years around the General Assembly, yeah. and he is um, just a delightful person, really forward thinking, and the two of them together are looking at this opportunity uh, with the Rural Health Work Group as not only how to solve our local issues um, on the Eastern Shore, but as a model for the state of Maryland and potentially as a model for the nation. A hospital is like insurance. It's something that you have, but you hope you never have to use it. And still, you want it to be there and you want it to be um, th robust when you walk through the doors. And so we are looking at how can we develop um, a sustainable institution that provides the services that are necessary here in Chestertown and recognizes that we're not going to be everything to everyone. Um, so we're going to need to still have regional support. Um, some of the subspecialties might not be located here physically in Chestertown. They might be in Easton, they might be in Baltimore. We're never going to be that, but we want to be what the best that we can be. And so um, I think in terms of the, the work group process, we are looking at what services really are needed here and what services make a hospital a hospital. It's more than an emergency room. Um, there's a recognition, I think, that a lot of healthcare quality, especially inpatient quality, is driven by a volume of procedures, but volume isn't the only quality indicator. There are some things um, I am looking into that smaller facilities like ours can do even better than the larger facilities. And it's that personal touch, the personal care, um, having access to your family and your support social network close by um, is those things all also contribute to healing and the healing process. And so we're looking at what, um, what can we do here that is going to be really beneficial for the community and how can we make that the best it possibly can be, recognizing that we're not going to you know, be um, a tertiary care facility like they have in Baltimore, you know, that deals with serious trauma. We're just yeah. not. <laughs> when I think about a healthy ecosystem, something that is, is alive, um, what are the components that go into that? And I think we can look at the healthcare system similarly. So one of the things that a healthcare system needs, probably the most fundamental things it needs is patients. So how can we get patients to use the so resources that are available here? Um, how can we give them a level of confidence in their hospital and in the services that it is providing in order for them to use that? Um, and then another healthy ecosystem in terms of healthcare, you need to have a workforce. So you need to have physicians. Um, I have been um, a little concerned about the um, idea of competition in a rural area because it seems that in a competitive environment with limited patient resources, you have the possibility of siphoning off those really important assets for the community and sending them to Eastern or across the bridge to Annapolis, which means that our little hospital isn't getting used as much as it should be by the local physicians. So how can we ensure that we not only have a thriving workforce, physician and, and other healthcare providers, um, but how can we make sure that those providers are using the facility that is here locally? Is. There are 
rural systems that are thriving and Geisinger in Pennsylvania is an example of that. So um, when we are looking at how to create a, a thriving healthcare system, how does Geisinger do it? How have they been able to attract physicians into rural areas, into remote facilities, um, and inspire those physicians to collaborate together to really focus on healthcare quality? That's their, their primary um, objective is how do we provide the highest quality care in a collaborative environment? And they've been able to make it work in, in rural Pennsylvania. So my question is, why couldn't it work here? Um, sure, there are lots of definitions of, of rural. Um, and I think that we have to take a look not only at mileage, um, that's, that tends to be a standard way that people look at rural areas, but also at the, the length of time that it takes to get to a particular place. And um, so when you're in Rock Hall and it takes an hour and a half on a you know, decent traffic day to get all the way up to Easton or over to Annapolis, then that's probably not conducive to having a, a high quality healthcare system. Um, th at the same time, there are a lot of other things that people need outside of the inpatient facility. And I think that those are the aspects of our healthcare system, particularly as healthcare is evolving into more of a community-based model where we're, we're um, linking people to essential aspects of care. Um, do they have healthcare through their job? Is there a way that they can pay for it? Do they have access to adequate food? Um, do they have health literacy? Do they have good social networks? There are a lot of other things that contribute to healthcare um, for the broad population and also for people who have chronic illnesses. They don't need care in the hospital. They need care outside by the state to address workforce challenges. So attracting the right types of providers here to our community, making sure that they their salary is um, appropriate, making sure that they have appropriate collaborative partners to be able to work with, um, making sure that their spouses can find jobs yeah. in our community, that their children can go to good schools. So that's a huge topic area that we could just focus our attention on by itself. Um, and the state has also tasked us with what are the special needs of our population? Um, what types of, um, of access and transportation issues do we need to look at? And what is the overall economic impact of any of this? Because in most small communities, their hospital is one of the major employers. And so if we are going to reconfigure healthcare in a way that really reaches some of those um, the people outside of the, the inpatient walls, um, how do we do that in a way that also sustains the economy and, and even potentially improves the economy? Um, I see there's this as a tremendous opportunity for us because, um, for example, we have very high rates of cancer on the eastern shore. And so why not, as we're having this conversation about what to do and how to build this for the future, why not consider a center of excellence for cancer care in our area. We also have an aging population and many retirees moving out to the Eastern Shore. We could have a center for geriatric specialty here. So there are, are other ways that we could potentially be um, thinking about that um, attraction and, um, and addressing some of the economic impact. I think that based on the national experience with critical access hospitals and some of the other models for reimbursement that they've used in rural areas, um, I think that there's a general acknowledgement that those reimbursement systems really aren't working. And we still need to find ways of bringing rural areas into the trend of value for our healthcare dollars. Um, and so, working again in a collaborative relationship with our neighboring counties and um, generating less competition and more cooperation I think is going to be beneficial mm -hmm. in the long run. I also um, personally think that consolidation in the healthcare 
system, which has been a trend for a long time, um, isn't necessarily serving. And so learning how we can um, diffuse resources and again, support each other in smaller regional ways. Well, I think people need to take a look at what they actually need. Again, we want a hospital there in the event that we need it, but we hope we never need it. Um, and so what do we need in terms of our day-to-day -day access to healthcare services? Um, I think most people recognize that they need to have better access to a primary care provider, whether that's a physician or a nurse practitioner um, or a physician's assistant potentially. Um, they need to have better education about nutrition and um, obesity and an environment in their community that encourages recreation and, and walking and a lot of social engagements. So. Um, I think that I, I understand that there's a great deal of anxiety about the loss of the inpatient facility and um, I also know that that's just one component part of what we need here. And I understand that there have been some challenges, some ongoing challenges um, related to the um, history of the hospital and kind of addressing some of the loss of services and I know that that is being addressed on a separate track from what we're doing. So um, one of the things that we felt needed to happen, and, and uh, Chairman Middleton also was um, very clear about this, that there would be no loss of services at the hospital until this process was concluded. I have seen some pretty spectacular ways that the hospital is coordinating care with um, Baltimore, for example, for their ICU beds. And um, telemedicine, I think, has a really great potential. And, um, and it Ha we, we should really take that opportunity. Not everything can be done by telemedicine, but there are some things that really can be done well. Um, and so we're looking at remote availability of services too. Um, I am optimistic not only because I spent, um, I've spent 20 years in the healthcare system and I've seen it change and um, I've seen many different conversations and iterations of reforms. And I think at this moment, we have more op opportunity based on the experiences that we've had that we know didn't work. We have more opportunity and a, a, a cleaner slate to work from. And I think the state is really asking us to think very creatively out of, outside of the box. How are we going to resolve this? Um, and so I am excited. Um, I'm excited because our state leadership is on board. They're enthusiastic. I'm excited. I think all of the rest of the um, rural health care work group members are excited about the opportunity. Um, I think the, the citizens, I understand that there's a little bit of anxiety and um, I hope that they can get to a place where they really see this as an opportunity.